Right. Okay. Can I hear me? Okay. Right. So um, I thought uh, I was going to do. So originally we sort of said I'd have to do a quick. I'd, I'd go through noobs a little bit just to explain to some people what noobs is. Um, I was going to talk, uh, do some uh, updates on sort of the issues that we've had with Raspberry Pi and whereabouts we are on those, and then just do a little bit of um, a couple of demos, uh, one of or a couple of new product T type things, and um, and a robot which I have, um, which I may demo if I if I uh, if I have the time. Um, so noobs. Uh, so we wrote noobs specifically for people who were having a lot of trouble um, imaging SD cards because there were quite a few of those. Um, and um, basically, what we found was is that going to work? Oh, it is. Uh, so what we found was uh, there were a lot of people having trouble. So we wanted to do make it much simpler to to, to be able to uh, actually create images for SD cards but also to recover um, SD cards when, uh, when things go wrong, when we get corruption on uh, SD cards. Uh, some simple way of, of making it so that we can actually recover uh, a Raspberry Pi. So if you go to downloads at the moment, um, you will see uh, Noobs. Um, Noobs comes in two, uh, two flavors, if you like. Um, the first one is the full Noobs. So that is, um, doesn't say on here, it's about 2.2 gigabytes download. So that contains um, four different um, operating systems in that one download. You download that, stick it onto a disk and run it, and then you can install uh, up, you know, between one and four um, uh, operating systems, depending on that, uh, what you want. Otherwise, you can use the other, uh, the other option, which is to download Noobs Lite so that's a 20 megabyte download, and it contains no operating systems, but allows you to download them um, online. So you can just go straight online. Um, so what I was just going to do is a quick demo of us starting into Noobs, um, and give you an idea of a couple of things that you can do using Noobs, uh, because it's, uh, it's um, cleverer, uh, or can be cleverer. Yeah, and actually, I don't know, I want to like, I want, um, I want to plug that one in there. See, this is in problem with technology. It's, uh, I forget things change. Okay, good. That's not supposed to happen. We'll try again. <laughs> So when you boot, it says for recovery null. Uh, it says hold shift if you if you hit shift. Uh, we actually changed between the original version of Noobs and the most recent one, which means that actually you have to hit it to make it go in here rather than hold it down. Uh, it's just because of the software that we use. So when you do that, it comes up into this. So actually, that time that it took to do this, that this is actually a full Linux. Um, so that's actually the time it takes to boot into Linux. Um, it's just a very, very cut down version of Linux. But, um, and in here at the moment, what this is showing you is that uh, on my SD card I have two operating systems installed. I have uh, Raspbian, our, our standard oper uh, operating system. I also have OpenLAC installed. Um, and the currently highlighted one is my default. And um, that is, uh, as you can see, says that those uh, three operating systems, um, the second two are actually the same thing, but just different flavors of the same operating system, um, are actually on the SD card. If I plug in uh, the network into the noobs, then it will give me all the other ones. So that actually will go online. Um, it actually has just gone online, check to find out what are available, and it gives you, downloads all the information and shows you which ones that are available. So for example, you could install Raspberry MC, Kodora, um, RiskOS if you really have to. Um, <laughs> personal favorites, obviously, uh, Raspbian because it's, uh, it's ours. Um, and uh, so Noobs is, you know, Noobs is a, is a great, uh, it's a great way of like, you know, you can, you can overwrite these things, you can delete them, etc., etc. It's great. 
But some of the other things that you can do using noobs is if you hold Control and Alt and press on the F, key, F keys, you can then switch to here and you can boot in, you can read, you can log in as root, password is raspberry, and then you can just go and do stuff in here. So if you've broken one of your SD cards, uh, one of your operating systems, you want to fix it, um, if it won't boot up into it, you can actually do it in here. It does require, you know, this is an advanced um, thing that you need to be able to do. But you, but you can do stuff in here and, um, you know, you can go find out, and find out what's gone wrong. Um, another quite fun thing is if you've got an SD card that's really broken and you want to fix it, what you can do is you can get to here, you can actually unplug your SD card and plug in a, a new one. Um, and what you'll see is that, oh look, it says here it says, oh look, you removed the SD card and then you plugged in a new one. Uh, so you can actually go and have a look at that then. You can, uh, uh, I, can uh, I can go to a mount. Let's have a look at P, um, where are we, five and six. So let's have a look at P7, just for fun. Oh, what's that? Oh, what did I get wrong there? So, there we go. There's, there's some, so, I, so if I've made some damage, then I can go in here and edit some files if I really have to. Um, otherwise, I can just go back to back to noobs and um, obviously then if I wanted to, I want to boot. So I'll get obviously boot into uh, to whatever is my flavour of the day, which changes. Um, so that's really noobs. I mean, you know, the thing about noobs is it allows you to, to like I say, it allows you to kind of wipe those up those files and just reinstall stuff. As so, if you break anything, then it's not really a major hassle. It's not as, as difficult as it was previously to go to, to reinstall to, to get a new image and download an image and use special Windows software to write it on there. Um, uh, so so this makes it much much simpler. Um, Yeah, okay. Um, I don't really want to do that actually. I want to go, I, I should have gone into that again because I'm going to now demo uh, the other interesting thing on my desk. So that would be this board, uh, which none of you will have seen before. So um, what you'll notice about this board is, uh, number one is uh, it connects through this list cable here into the Raspberry Pi camera port, uh, which is quite interesting. And then it also connects, um, there's some wires here, uh, which is the power input, so we just power it from here. And it also connects to HDMI. Now you might think, well that's clearly the wrong way around, right, because like camera takes data in, but HDMI surely takes data out. It's like, well, yes it does, sometimes, <laughs> although it's also possible to take data in through HDMI. Um, so what we're going to do is boot up again. I should really have a reset button on my Raspberry Pi. It's only been a year. Um, I will get around to sorting mine out some way. Oh no, I don't know Here we go. So, so we go in here now. Obviously, like I said, I've got this connected into the res the, the the camera input port. So obviously, I would whatever this thing is, I would, I would clearly just use the standard camera software to talk to it. Um, and um, let's give it. Like 
going down the little pink cable into, into the extra little board and they're going through the camera and, uh, and appearing on the screen. And then of course what I can do is uh, exit from that and do things like hopefully head back again. So there we go. So we have uh, HDMI input uh, on Raspberry Pi, which is fun. Uh, I got basically a, uh, an intern came to work for me for uh, about three months during the summer. And during this process, he actually uh, created this. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a fun thing. Um, we're just not sure at the moment whether or not it's actually any, of any use. <laughs> any <actual laughs> use. Um, I, you know, I know that some people like to record games, for example. They like to plug, it in the, plug their Xbox into it or something. But the problem is that what we can't do is we can't do um, encrypted um, uh, uh, HDMI because, um, what well, we could do, but what you would then do is use it to steal things. And uh, we would then get, um, get charged like millions of dollars. So it's, it's, so it's the kind of thing that we can't do. But, um, but um, yeah, so we can't handle encrypted content, which means you can't go plugging into your Skybox or into uh, anything else. But you can plug into a PC or a Mac or a you know a PlayStation or an Xbox or something and, and record data. So it's interesting. Um, it's not yet and currently is not planned as a project. Um, it's still as a, it is still an interesting artifact of, of some work that somebody did. Um, yeah. What chips on the board? Um, a chip that we use to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give away, give away mm -hmm. the details of, of, the, of the project. It, do you need a lot of electronics to decode the HDMI and turn it into the... No. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's one chip. Yeah. It does all work very yeah. yeah. All the complex parts of it is actually in software. Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, this, this is majority, this is 90% software work. Of, you know, really it's only 10% hardware. But uh, yeah, the guy who did it was a very, very clever guy I really wanted to employ him. Um, unfortunately, he came from Singapore and had to go back to work for the government for six years or something. So, uh, which is something that they do. Uh, just finally, I'm sure Michael's going to be shouting to, uh, to get me off. No, no, so, you're fine. Oh, we're good, are we? We're good. So uh, one of the things is that we've had a lot of trouble with um, power supplies in the past with Raspberry Pis. So, we are actually in the process of actually having a, an official Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi power supply. Um, uh, that's not just the only thing about the Raspberry Pi power supply, which is, which is good. Um, but um, the, the nice thing about the Raspberry Pi power supply is we've actually fully tested it. Um, in fact, had it, uh, we've had it run through EMC and uh, with Raspberry Pi as well, just to check to make sure that, um, that it is it is good with Raspberry Pi and um, for any future changes that we make to various pieces that may or may not occur in the future. Um, <laughs> any future projects that may or may not occur that also require power, etc. etc. Um, so we're going to um, be selling the power supply probably through Pimerani um, at some point in the future, uh, probably in the next three to four months or so. Um, we actually have a, a number of those. Um, I do have some other things in my box, uh, but well, I'm going to duck. <laughs> Don't shout. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. I'm not going to say anything more about that particular product. So let's just pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> and then, so this is my the only final thing which I've got, which isn't a Raspberry Pi product. It's, it's a it's a Gordon product. Um, this is actually this is actually something you can buy. At least in, in America, you can buy it. Um, 
which is it's a if you like it's a little rover that uh, that you can plug into your your iPhone and you can drive it around. It shows you the video coming out the front and all this kind of stuff. And I and I bought it for my daughter. Um, unfortunately, she has um, an Android phone and of course does nothing for her. Um, so I decided what I would do is therefore tear it to pieces and put a Raspberry Pi inside it because that <laughs> makes it much much cooler. So yeah, so this is um, so you've got the Raspberry Pi in here. Um, so you've got the Raspberry Pi in here, um, and then it's literally just got a couple of wires into a into a, a motor control board in here, which was a there was a there's a there's a site called Onion Robot, and I've no idea. It's just some random guy I think is just doing it on the, doing it by himself, making uh, making these these boards. So it's got that in there. Um, I think uh, Mike, not Michael, what's his name from earlier, was saying about um, about power supplies for these things. Um, I've got something. If you want to do a power supply from a battery for Raspberry Pi, go online and search for UBEC. U B E C. Um, what that is is it's it's a universal battery eliminator circuit. Um, I don't see how that's a um, battery eliminator. Anyway, uh, but. Um, so what it is is basically it's a it's a it's a, it's a switch mode power supply in a very very small um, box. Um, now I would show you, but it's it's right in here. You can't really see it. But basically, what that does is it takes the nine volts from here and converts it into the five volts from my Raspberry Pi, and literally comes really luckily comes out to exactly the right connector that you would need to plug it into a Raspberry Pi as well. And that is complete luck. But if you go online and, and have a look, and it costs like you know five quid or something. So if anybody actually wants to run something off batteries, then that's probably the easiest way of doing that if, if you want to do that, um, which is the way I've done it. Uh, I can show you this. It doesn't really do anything particularly complex, um, but uh, it takes part, it's, it's running Raspbian, so it does take a little while to boot up. Um, and then uh, I need to give it, I need to give it a keyboard. Uh, Working. Like I say, it takes a little while to boot up. Oh, no, 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 it's going. It's going. Um, so yeah, I mean, this was another one of those things where, like I said, I was just doing it in my spare time, and um, in the end, I got it to kind of just work as like a big track where you programmed it to just do a specific set of moves. Uh, which I got my daughter to play around with a little bit. Um, and then in the end, because I just got bored with doing that, I then, uh, I then got it so I could control it through the wireless keyboard, uh, which is actually far more difficult than you'd think it would be. You'd think you just kind of write a little program that says, right, you know, get a key. You know, if it's forward, then go forward. If it's left, go left. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Um, you know, real, real systems, when you get a key, what they do is they expect you to get a key and then press enter. Um, and that's uh, less useful in general. Oh, there you go. so it's now it's now beautiful. And as you can see, it just sits and, and uh, you can control it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. Well, you guys can play around, but um, but yeah, it's 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 fun. Um, and people say, well, why do you write? Why do you make a robot? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, why why not? I kind of like it's my job, so yeah. how good is my job? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, I think that's about it for the moment. So I think done. Any, any questions on you know any of the stuff, noobs, uh, HMI input, robots, things? Any questions at all? Oh, yeah. The HMI input is you said you couldn't see any use for it. Is it going to be available as a to buy? Or well, that's the point, right? If I can't make ten, if I if I'm not going to sell ten thousand of them, then I'm not going to make one of them. Right. But I have made one of them. I've made about five of them. But if I can't sell ten thousand of them, there's just no point for the, for the for the foundation to create it. It's just not it's not it's not viable for us. Uh, so um, so yeah, I mean that's that's the point is that um, the you know if, if if people believe that it's actually a useful thing to have. Um, and you know, and I, you know then, then I would then I would do it. But at the moment, I've just we've just we floated the idea in a number of places, and everywhere we floated it, popped on. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It sounds really good. So, like, what are you going to use it for? It's like, yeah, I don't know. 
you know, I might record some games, but actually, and there are you know, there are companies who have systems that record games. They have little boxes that you plug stuff into, and they record it onto an SD card and that kind of stuff. So yeah, you can do that, but uh, but I don't think we'll sell ten thousand of them. So. And so this is supplementary. The, the thing that you seem to have in your bag look like a screen with a <laughs> Raspberry Pi on the back. Um, it doesn't have a Raspberry Pi on the back right now. But yeah, it's just a drive board on the back at the moment. Yeah. There's a, there, is a, there is going to be a Raspberry Pi display available that plugs into the DSi on your Raspberry Pi. Um, probably early next year. Early, maybe first quarter, somewhere between first and second quarter next year. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Just going back to the HDMI board, if only there was some kind of website where you could get people to pledge money and then it could get us set up. <laughs> <laughs> so we really don't like that. The, the reason is that um, in the real world with real companies, real companies shouldn't go out into the world and ask you for money and capital so that they can do business. What you should do is you should decide on the product that you're going to make, make sure that it is the right product, you know, do your market research, do your stuff, and then you like raise your capital and go make that product. Otherwise, you know, as as a charity, which is what we really are, that's how we funded, um, you know, to go out to you and kind of go, well actually we'd like to do this thing, but actually what we want you we want you to, 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 to fund it for us is it, it doesn't send the right message from a from a charity from a charitable point of view. It doesn't really send the right message out. Um, yeah, my feeling has been well. Actually, what we could do is just do just do the don't pay us any money, right? I don't want you to pay us any. I just want to say, would you buy one? But then, of course, is well, if you don't pay us any money, would you actually buy one? Because anybody can click the button. Oh yeah, I'd buy one. <laughs> and and uh, you know, if it doesn't cost me. Um, I, you know, and, and um, so I'm all continuously torn in this in this in this particular area. So uh, so yeah, I, I I have similarly thought to myself, yeah, maybe this is a product that we could do that with, and then find out whether or not anybody really wants it. Because there's it's quite simple. If you know, I can quite easily make a number up. And actually, ten thousand is is way larger than you know. If we if we made about, I, I think probably a thousand of them would be would be. Um, would would still would still work. Uh, the issue is the the actual resources that Raspberry Pi have to do that work. So it's it actually is you know it, it might look like it's a finished product here, but you know we have uh, you know just to give you an example of, of you know what what kind of stuff that you'd have to do to get this to market. Um, you know I already have a board. I've got a design. I've got a bill of materials. That's all great. Uh, it would take me, uh, you know, just for each one of these components, uh, you know, probably that chip on there, that main chip, will have a, a 12 to 16 week lead time. Um, so there you go, like four months. It's going to be four months at least, you know, minimum. Uh, amount of work that I have to do, well, I have to get all of those bullet material bits. I have to go and go and find sources for all those components, get those through to, to the guys at Sony who will then do that job again for me anyway, because because that's a job that they do. Um, we have to take that design, we have to pass it to the guys who make PCBs at Sony. Uh, they have to look through this design, they have to decide whether or not uh, we've done some bad stuff. Uh, we have to look at it under EMC to make sure that uh, when you actually plug these things in together it doesn't uh, radiate too badly. Uh, we have to, you know, and once you add up all that work, uh, what it means is that that's all work that could have been spent doing other, doing more important things. So it's simultaneously that you know it's all swings and roundabouts, unfortunately. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe as we move on, maybe next year, this is the kind of stuff that we'd just be able to do because we'll have enough people. But, yeah. I've got one last question. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is this, uh, how long do you think the current version of the Pi will last before a revamped version comes along? Good question. <coughs> Not going to answer. <laughs> Would you answer that question? So the problem is that if I answer that question, what well, everybody in this office, for number one, it goes straight out to the world through some camera back here. But number two is, it goes to every person in the world just sit there and go, well, I'm not going to buy a pie until that date because I know there's a new version coming out. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a problem for us. And it's a problem not just, actually, it's not really a problem for us, we buy ourselves. 
it's a problem for our distributors and it's a problem for the, for the channel, right? Because, you know, throughout, although in the UK, generally you're buying Raspberry Pis pretty directly, um, a lot of the guys, you know, the guys out here, they have Raspberry Pis and they've bought Raspberry Pis. So if I tell you now, you're not going to then go out there and buy a Raspberry Pi from that guy. He's never going to sell that Raspberry Pi, right? That then gets thrown back at the distributors in you know, RS and Farnell because they, because they can't sell them, so they just give them back and go, look, I can't sell these, um, and they then take a hit in the sales. So this is why this is why Apple do this thing that they do, where they announce products at the very last moment. Uh, it's it's completely about how money moves around in terms of physical products. Uh, and we, we, this is why, you know, we're always in that point where a lot of people complain at us saying, well, why did you, you know, why did you just keep selling it up until this day and then just switch over to some new version? It's like, well, we don't really have any chance. We can't let you know beforehand, otherwise, um, yeah, you, you'd stop buying, and that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Paul. All right, cheers, thanks.